Hello and welcome! So I just recorded without actually having the microphone turn on, so here we go again. So now we are going to actually make it load into the UI so we can actually use our data we saved. So now we are going outside the editor actually, so let's make a folder. And we're just gonna call it dialog use. And again, my naming is kind of horrible, so don't think too much about that. So, we want, uh, first we want one to follow our language. So let's go language controller. And this is funny enough going to control the language. So this one is going to control what language we are speaking or using in the game at the moment. All right, and next up we are going to make um, one that can actually load out the data. We're gonna go dialog, git data. This one's function is literally just to get the data out of our uh, dialog container. Then we need one to uh, control, then we need our dialog controller to uh, control the dialog. Oh, well, this one is pretty much just gonna be plucked on here and it's going to control which of all the UI we are going to handle. I'm just gonna put name and top. So we can actually just throw this out here. So here we will drag all in all the reference here. And click, 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 click. Wonderful. Uh, we also need one to actually speak the dialogue. Oh, not speak the dialogue. So we're just going to make one called dialogue talk. Uh, that seems to all be spelled correctly. Wonderful. So let's just make the dialogue controller, the language controller, and clear this one out. Wonderful. So let me just quickly look at my notes. Wonderful. All right. So. This one don't need to be serialized. It has a little serialized piece, but I like to. This way I can actually see which language we are on right now. And next up we need, because we are going to make this one uh, into a, oh, a singleton. Yeah, I forgot it for a second. So we're gonna call it instant. It's just, um, it's just been accepted that when you make it in when you make a singleton, you're gonna call it instant. So we are just gonna call it instant, and we want it to be sure that you can get it anywhere, but you can only set it in our script here. And next up, we just want the ability to you know get a handle on the language no matter no matter where you are. And then we're going to make a wick. And here is where we are going to make the Unity instant, where we are going to simply ask instant, are you null? If you are null, well, then Mr. Instant, then you are equals this. Meaning whenever we call the instant, it will, it will return this specific one here. And this also means that we need to make sure that it does not destroy and load. Well, we can do this, but we can also not do this. It's I just found it easier that to also make it into a one that follows you from scene to scene, so that it will remember what language you're on right now. Or else you have to load in the language each time. This way, when you start up the game once, we can just load the language in. Hello, what if you are on Danish, German, uh, English, and we don't have to load it in every time you change scene, it will simply just follow. However, that means each scene will have a version of this. So we need to tell it if instant is not null, meaning it already exists in the scene, well, we have to destroy this one that's already there. Oh, wonderful. All right. So that means we're, of course, going in, going in here. And let's see. Oh, we haven't made one in the scene called it, so here we go. Language controller. I like to have it in the top because then it's easy to find. And here we go. So now we can simply change the name ourselves. That's why I made it serialized. So we can, uh, you know, easy find it. 
So now, every time we load scene, it will remember what language we are using in this moment, and we can call this language controller from anywhere, so we can always make sure that it has the right language. Alright, so let's go into actually making the dialogue. Let's delete all this, we don't need that. Let me just quickly look at my notes. And um, this one here is going to have a serialized field where it will then take in the dialog container and we will have a dialog container here and here we are going to load in the different dialogs that this one is going to use and, uh, and not, not use, sorry, not use uh, we're not going to load in, we are going to make a function that can go into the container here and get their, their specific node so let's make one here. We're going to make this protected because we want um, other scripts to be able to inherit from this one here. Oh, that means we also need to make this protected. There we go. All right, so we're going to call base node. Let's simply get get a node by gun, meaning it will then find the specific node in the, uh, the the dialog container that has this specific gun. So we're gonna go in and say target node gun. So we're going to return this one. So we're gonna go return and go dialog container dot all nodes. And we of course want it to find um, find. So we're gonna say find and go node and use a lump expression go node dirt uh, node gun where that is equals to our target gun so it will then go in and find the gun uh, the target uh, the node's gun that has the same known <laughs> this is wonderful just remember that the the gun is actually a kind of ID just um, which uh, made with string instead of numbers if it is that, well, then it will simply return that node. All right, wonderful. We also need one for our, um, what is the, oh, sorry. <laughs> we need one for our uh, dialogue node ports. So for our, each dialogue have a different node port. So we need to be able to give it a node port and find out where it should go from there. So we're gonna go dialogue, uh, like get node by node Port. Oh, let's just make sure we are keeping to our own na naming convention. Now this one is going to take in a dialog node pod. And let's just call it node pod. So we're gonna go return dialog node container dot all nodes dot find node and use a lump expression again dot node gun where that is equals to node part dot input gun oh let's just uh, show that if we go gun you can see the input and output output is where it's coming from and input is where it's going and we have gone one once the next one so we're gonna go input and then return that one so we're simply going to f to look at what uh, the node port uh, where it's where its line is going, and simply return that node it is going to. Next up, we want to be able to just throw in a base node on its own, and be able to get the next one in the line. Because uh, let's just quickly go in here. As you can see, a uh, event node pretty much just goes goes through. So we just want to be able to make one where just simply just go through it. So we're just going to make that. Oh, not that one. So we're gonna get next node. Uh, let's just call it next node. And that one is going to take in a base node data. And we're just gonna call it base node data. Now we are here we need to go a little more into because we need to find the node link it is connected to. So we're gonna go node link data 
equals double digit data equal oh yeah not equals uh, dialog container dot node links and here we of course want to find uh, the edge that is connected to this one so we're gonna go edge dot base node equals base node dot node gun all right so what are we doing here well we're going to the uh, the dialog container finding the node link data and then finding the edge that is connected um, to this specific node that has the uh, um, uh, that is connected uh, again our in, uh, naming convention is a little whoopsie doopsie as you can see base node is uh, is the output and target node is the input and that is some naming convention that we'll probably need to to go in and fix a little later because it's stupid to have different naming conventions for different things. So let's just go here and go return get next node. Oh, and here we can actually use our own function. So by by going node data dot target node and this way, we simply uh, find the link and giving it the target, meaning out like uh, like here. We are first we are finding the node, this node here, and then we are telling it the output node. We want this specific line, and then we are asking the line which are you which are you target, and the target is the input it is connected to. So we're literally telling it first find the node, find the link between the nodes, and then find the link, uh, <laughs> the link what it is linked to, that is kind of a mouthful for word. So it's called link to input. Let's go back in here, and yeah, that should be it for this one. And let's go out, and it has now saved this one. And I'm think I'm gonna end the episode from right here for today. Well, thank you for watching. See you next time.